So now we've gone ahead and taken our Oris X5S V5 SL1 out of the box. Let's take a look and see what it has for uh, specs on it. So with, the, with this model, you're going to have a 15-inch ultra-high definition 4K resolution screen. So that's 3840 by 2160. And it is a matte screen to it, so it doesn't have a lot of reflection on there. For the processor, it's got a sixth generation Intel Skylake i7 6700HQ processor. The graphics card is going to be an NVIDIA GTX 980 graphics card with 8 gigabytes of video memory. On this configuration of the X5, we have a 256 gigabyte PCIe SSD uh, NVMe drive, actually. And that's going to be one of the newer, faster style of solid state drives, so you can get the quickest uh, read and write speeds out of it. It also comes equipped with a one terabyte, 7200 RPM hard drive in there. And that's something that both of those could be upgraded on that as well. Um, for the memory on it, it comes with 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and that's 2133 megahertz speed. And that's upgradable up to 64 gigabytes. For the network on it, it has a killer gaming network LAN, and it also has an integrated 80211 AC uh, wireless card and Bluetooth 4.1. Comes preloaded with Windows 10 Home Edition on there, 64-bit. It also has, you know, just like almost every other laptop, a webcam and microphone built into the screen on it. This is also one of the thinnest laptops that we have that's got a 980 graphics card in there. So for the dimensions on it, it's going to be... Uh, across here, it's going to be 15.35 inches wide. You know, down the side here, it is going to be 8.66 inches deep. And then on the thickness, when it's closed, it's going to be coming under an inch at 0.9 inches thick. And the weight on this whole system, with everything included and built in, is 5.51 pounds. All right, we'll go ahead and zoom on in on the side of the computer here, and we'll take a look at the ports that are on it. So when you're looking at the front, really nothing much going on here, except you do have some indication lights up on the front right corner. So you've got one for Bluetooth, wireless, uh, hard drive activity, charging, and then uh, just power in general. Uh, slide on over to the right side. You've got a vent right there up front, and that's going to be on both sides of the left and the right. Uh, once we get over to the right side here, you do have your, your card reader for an SD card, two different ports for USB 3, and then an HDMI port right there on the side. And then right behind that, then you've got uh, some ventilation on it as well on both of the, the back corners there. Sliding around to the back here, the, on the left, you've got your uh, AC adapter plug-in right there for the power. Then you have a VGA port, another USB 3, and then your gigabit Ethernet LAN port right there. Go past the one last vent. And then on this side, we come across a mini display port. And then there is what looks like an HDMI port right there, but it's actually blocked off. There's nothing in there. And then you've got a headphone jack and a microphone jack. And then the one last little port there is going to be your USB 3.1 Type-C connection as well. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the keyboard and the trackpad on the Aorus X5S here. Uh, up top, we do have the, the speakers up there. This is just a sound bar up there. And then you've got the, the power key right there, which is actually backlit with the, uh, the Aorus logo once it's on and off there. Uh, you've got a full-size regular uh, keyboard for, you know, pretty standard on, on what you find on a laptop. You know, you've got your 10 key over here, uh, some control options for the function keys up top. Uh, overall, the, the keyboard, pretty solid on that. Uh, not really any, any flex that I can tell. I mean, any kind of movement you might see there is probably just our table, but uh, overall, pretty, pretty solid keyboard there. Uh, on the left side, you do have the programmable G keys there. So just like any of the other Aorus models, you can have five different buttons that you can program it to uh, different gaming functions or different program options within Windows to launch a program or for different settings like control and paste, things like that. And then you've got different uh, five different settings on that, so you can set each one up for uh, you know, different options there and just cycle through that. Uh, down here, you've got your trackpad on there with the Aorus logo on there. And there's no dedicated buttons or anything like that. But overall, it's a little bit glossy and then, you know, solid feel to it. Not a lot of texture on it, um, but, you know, good response on that right there. And like we do with about any model that we take a review at, uh, we're going to go ahead and look at the screen on this and check it out for uh, just the, the viewing angles on it. 
So as I mentioned before, this is a 4K resolution screen, 15 inches, and uh, it is a matte finish. Um, but let's go ahead and tilt it back here and see. That's about as far as it goes back. There's really no difference in color there from what I'm looking at here. And then we'll go ahead and tilt it forward. Give you an idea of kind of what the colors look like when you're tilting it there. It does look a little bit different just from what I'm seeing here, but usually it's not until you get closer to, to closing up. That's where you might see any kind of difference there. Uh, we'll spin it from side to side and go ahead and take a look at the viewing angles from there as well. Go ahead and take a look at the right side now. So all in all, not too bad on that. Maybe just a little bit of color shift on there from the sides, but you know, from what I'm seeing here, it's not too bad at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at two different softwares that come with this Aura's computer as well. Uh, the first one is gonna be the Command and Control Center on here. And this is just giving you an overview of the system status itself. So uh, give you an idea on how much disk use is spaced, uh, how hard the GPU is working, the CPU as well, uh, how much of your memory you're using, and then also your battery as well over here. Um, nice little thing is it's got an indicator that you've got about two hours and 10 minutes left on the battery here so far. Uh, you also have an indicator for fan speed, what performance mode you're on, and then temperatures as well. Uh, the last little part down here is just an indicator of uh, your, your network connection right there and, and how fast it's working as well. So that's uh, the command and control center on this model. And then the other software on here is just the uh, Aorus macro keys on here, so uh, the macro engine, excuse me. Um, so you've got the, the different options on here to see what, what profile you're set to and then what options you can set it up for. So you've got the options to launch different programs. You can set up some different macros for you know, different games, uh, different combinations there. And then you can also set it up to, to run different apps uh, as well as be able to control like your fan speed, uh, which you've got that right here. And then you know, pull up your system, uh, the, that command center as well. So. Um, that's a look at the two unique softwares that, that Oris has put on here just to help control the system. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and start the computer here and hit the watch on my phone just to get an idea of how quickly this computer is going to boot up. Uh, again, it does have a NVMe solid state drive in there, so hopefully it should be pretty quickly. And then once we get into Windows, we'll go ahead and we'll hit that stop. All right, there we go. It was about 18 seconds. So overall, really pretty good time on that, on how quickly it gets from being completely off and to on. And we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the BIOS on this and see what all settings are in there. And once we turn on the computer, I'm gonna go ahead and hit F2 to get into the setup here. And right there, we're in the BIOS. So on the main page here, we do have just some of the general BIOS information. So what version you've got, uh, system date, system time, system language. And that's just English on that one there. On the advanced tab here, you have 3D graphics acceleration on or off. Onboard device configuration. So you have your options for wireless LAN, RTT support, webcam, PXE, UEFI, PXE legacy as well. And then static configuration, that's where you can go in and set up HCI or if you want it in RAID and then aggressive LPM support. NVMe configuration, just gives you some of the information about the drives in there. It looks like a Samsung MZVPV256. And then you've got your SATA controller, and then USB configuration as well. You can turn the legacy on or off there. Over onto the chipset one here, you do just have some information on how much RAM is in there. So uh, just showing the two eight gigabyte sticks that are in the, the RAM slots there. And then security, you could go ahead and set up an administrator password there. And then delete all secure boot variables. 
And under the boot tab here, you do have your numlock state. So on and off if you want the numlock on the keypad to be on when you turn it on. And you've got your boot options right there. And you've got your OS type as well right there. So that is a look at the BIOS settings on the X5S. We've got the Aorus X5S right here ready to go. Going to take a look at what is on the inside of it and take off this bottom panel here. I've already gone ahead and loosened up all the screws on it, so you don't need to watch me do that. But uh, there's 12 screws, screws on the outside here. The four on the back are going to be the longest. There's a couple of middle sized, medium sized ones in the middle here, and then shorter ones on the front size. And they are a, a star screw instead of a Phillips head, so, so your regular plus. So you will need a little bit of a different bit. But once you go ahead and loosen those out, then you can uh, just get a fingernail underneath like the bottom, the bottom corner here and then just lift it up and then just work your fingers around and pull it up. I've already gone ahead and done that. Once we open it up, let's go ahead and take a look and see what's all in here. So up front here, this is your battery. And this right here is going to be the two and a half inch drive. So this one comes stock with a one terabyte 7200 RPM drive in there. Uh, you've got the battery for the CMOS right there. And then you've got your CPU and GPU just underneath the heat sinks right here, connected up to the fans on each side, which is going to vent the heat out from the side here, which you'll take a look at the, the FLIR images when we're doing benchmarks to see that. Right here, you do have two additional M.2 slots in there. In this M.2 slot, we do have our 256 gigabyte uh, NVMe drive in there. And then this right here is going to be your wireless card. So that's the 802.11 AC wireless card in there. Also on the back here, uh, you do have your two open slots for RAM because there are four slots on this one that you could put up to 64 gigabytes. So two of the other sticks of RAM are going to be hidden uh, more than likely between the keyboard and the motherboard. Uh, we're not going to take a look at that, but if you want to do upgrades on that, pretty easy to access that one right there. And that is what you're going to find on the inside of an Aorus X5S V5 SL1. Thank you very much for sticking through the video and watching everything that we have on the uh, Aorus X5S V5 SL1. I hope you got some questions answered. If you have any questions on it, feel free to contact us in sales at 1-877-289-9684. You can always email in to sales at exoticpc.com or hop onto our live chat or forums on our website and ask questions that way. Thanks and have a great day.